Distractions, mistakes, and accidents. They happen to all of us. It's just a part of human nature. But sometimes, these accidents can be deadly. And on August 7th, 2015, one of these accidents occurred. Not paying attention when operating a vehicle like a car or a train can have deadly consequences. And on this day, just that happened. On a, Norfolk, on a stretch of Norfolk Southern Track in Sandersville, Georgia. On that fateful August day, NS Local G23, led by SD 40-2-1637, was making its way back to the yard from finishing up morning work. The crew were given a track warrant by the NS Savannah dispatcher and told in 1637 to proceed into Tannel Yard in Tannel, Georgia. Meanwhile, waiting in Tannel Yard, heard on the main line, was NS Intermodal Number 208, led by C40-9W 9796, with ES44 AC Number 8132 trailing. Behind them, the two had in tow oh, a full load of double stacked intermodal containers. 9796's crew were given a track warrant to work between milepost S133.0 east and 78.8 on the main line, adding the words, Do not depart until the G23 shows up. However, the stack train crew was later confused by this. Eventually, they decided they could just take off east since they were a higher priority intermodal train. But this turned deadly. Ninety-seven ninety-six passed the Georgia Highway 242 crossing and then the defect detector at milepost S131.5, which registered the train going 49 miles per hour eastward. Bad idea. The local, on the other hand, passed the defect detector at S122.3 milepost, and then crossed Sunco Grand Road and started around the curve to the Highway 242 crossing. The very same crossing that 97 was about to roll across. The two trains spot each other after 9796 crosses Route 242. Both crews slam on the emergency brakes and bail from their trains, but it's just too late. After the crash, total silence covered the tracks. Two crew members were severely injured from, from bailing out of their trains, and one ended up on life support. Surprisingly, no one was killed during this violent wreck. Well, that's good at least. Pretty much everything else was bad news. 9796's fuel lines had been severed, and red diesel fuel oh, that fed the giant GE7 FDL old dash 16 engine was leaking everywhere. One of the locals had lived in the area for 15 years, and apparently he said that he had seen derailments, but nothing ever like this. 9796 was totally destroyed and written off for scrap. And 1637 met a similar fate. 8132, on the other hand, was lifted from, from the wreckage and put into storage before being transported to New York for repairs. Now how on earth did this even happen in the first place? Well apparently, the 9796's crew had been in a little confused by their track warrant, so they thought the G23 was behind them and they could take off. Well, they were wrong and then this happened. The engineer was also talking to someone on the phone when his conductor was receiving the track warrant, and according to NS rules and the National Transportation Safety Board and whatever, they all say no. Cell phones must be locked inside crew members' bags at all times, powered off and on silent mode, to prevent distractions. 
Cell phone use is only permitted if the dispatcher or engineer can't get through via radio, however. In the end, the, N the NTSB he cited the dispatcher and the engineer of 9796 at fault for the accident, although Norfolk Southern, for some reason, doesn't really agree with the NTSB on the dispatcher being at fault, but definitely about the engineer. It's been six years since this crash, and we can only hope something like this, or a wreck of this magnitude, never happens again. Thank you.